Good evening to you. And today is our miracle breakthrough Sunday, and we expect the Lord to do great things for us. And uh, well, when we look at scripture, there are many, many names by which Jesus is, um, uh, is, the, is defined. He's called the Savior, the Deliverer, the Healer. And sometimes we too can personally uh, identify him by these names. He has healed us, delivered us. So today we are going to ask God to, uh, to deliver us, to heal us, and to bring a blessing that no one else could give. And I invite you today to look at a woman with the issue of blood. We read this story in Mark chapter 5 from verses 24 to 34. So would you please read with me? Shall we read together? And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straight away the fountain of her blood blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him turned him about in the press and said who touched my clothes and his disciples said unto him thou seest the multitude thronging thee and sayest thou who touched me and he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Hallelujah. So I would like to discuss a few important topics in this passage. And uh, how many of you have read this passage before or known this passage before? Well, I think virtually everybody has known this passage. So I'll be talking to you of three aspects. The issue, touching Jesus, and she felt within her heel. So what are the three topics that I'm going to discuss with you today? The issue, touching Jesus, and she felt within her that she was healed. So when we look at this woman with the issue of blood, we, we don't see a name here. We see a woman with the issue of blood. Now, if ever you heard the story, this story, how would you refer to her? We don't have a name here, but as soon as you mention the woman with the issue of blood, we know it is about this story. The woman with the issue of blood, straight away our mind goes into this story. Now, the problem with this issue is, sometimes the problems grow so big in our life that it swallows up our identity. Have you been consumed by an issue in your life that you lost track of who you are? You so got so engrossed with the issue that the only thing that you know of is the issue. This woman had no name. And how was she referred? The woman with the issue of blood. Now, dear brothers and sisters, we too have many issues in life. But if we get consumed with the issue, sometimes we lose track of our identity. We lose track of who we are. And what happens when we have an issue? It affects our prayer life. Sometimes when we go to God in prayer, we say, Lord, this is my issue. Oh God, please heal. Oh God, please solve. Oh God, help me in trouble. Won't you see me? The more you talk about the issue, we forget who God is and we forget who we are. And the only thing we see is the issue, the issue, the issue, the issue. Now, this woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. Now, what did this issue do to her? 
this woman the scriptures say this woman went to doctor after doctor but the condition grew worse this woman would have had uh, when it started it, she had the means she had the friends she had her position in life she would have had a husband but what did this issue do as long as this issue was there something drained out of her life she was losing blood now we all know that it's normal for a woman to lose blood but this issue was not only for three or four days but this issue was for 12 long years now dear brothers and sisters if a issue is there for a long time in your life no matter how strong you are no matter how courageous you are no matter how educated you are as long as a issue goes for a long time you can be sure it will drain you out it will drain your strength out it will drain your courage out because when there is an issue we put up all our strength to fight against it now now dear now as long as we live we may have issues now you know you may have an issue i may have an issue but praise god i don't have an issue that is going for 12 years you may have an issue for for a month if you have an issue for a month what we you can wink at the issue hey that's only for one month there are some issues which are 5 minutes when you are driving and some other motorist is rude to you and you get angry about it that issue is only for 2 minutes 5 minutes it's gone and you don't have to remember it anymore but this issue was not like that if the issue was for 6 months you can even work at it and come out of it but this issue was for 12 long years she was not only losing blood but she was losing her finances she was not only losing blood but she was losing her relationships she was not only losing blood but she was losing even the hope of li- living because this issue was going for a long time and it drained her and it drained her and it drained her now dear brothers and sisters this is a issue of blood but we may not have an issue of blood today but we may have different issues we may have issues of anger we may have issues of jealousy we may have emotion uh, issues of addiction we may have issues of uh, strife we may have many issues but what happens when there is a issue it drains you out and this is the very reason that we have come here for a healing meeting for a miracle breakthrough meeting so that that issue can be solved in jesus name when you meet jesus you meet the solution for your issue and not only did the issue drain her out but this issue separated her from everything that she wanted to be connected to in the olden days in the jewish uh, 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 society if a woman had a issue of blood she becomes unclean nobody can touch her how the husband can't touch her or love her the children can't hug her the neighbors can't see her come where she come where she is what has happened to this woman the relationships were separated love was far away she was separated from everything that she wanted to be connected to her relationships were gone she couldn't be connected to the wealth and the uh, money that she has accumulated this issue has taken everything out now dear brothers and sisters i just want you to think put yourself in the shoes of this woman for one hour, for half an hour 
I just want you to come in, put yourself in the shoes of this woman. Do you have an issue today that needs the touch of God? Some issues are not issues but your dreams. These are dreams that are long unfulfilled. But as long as something is unfulfilled, this becomes an issue in your life. And this issue is draining you and separating you. The wonder of this story is that Jesus comes along this, uh, Jesus goes on a road and this woman wanted to touch Jesus. And the moment that she touched Jesus, she was completely well because Jesus healed her. Hallelujah. Now today, why are we discussing about this issue? It is because we have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. This woman had this issue for 12 years and she wanted to touch Jesus. Now she, the Bible tells us that this woman heard about Jesus. We do not know how she heard, but this woman heard about Jesus. Now why did this woman want to touch Jesus? Why did this woman want to touch Jesus? Because she ran out of options. She has gone to doctors, they have failed her. She has gone to counselors, they have failed her. She has gone to this person and that person, they have failed her. And 12 years came, there was nobody who could ever help her. And she decides, okay, I'm going to come to Jesus. Now, dear brothers and sisters, sometimes God has to close all the other options so that you can clearly come to know him. Now, as an example, there are certain parts of India that has no water. They have to pray to God saying, God, give us water. I think even in some parts of Sri Lanka, you have very remote places where there is no water. And they have to trust God. God, please give us water. But I do not have to trust God for water. Why is that? Because I have pipe bone water. As long as I open the tap and water gushes out, I don't have to have faith for water. Why? Why don't I have faith for water? Because it's within my limit. I don't have to trust God for it. Now this is the same thing with knowing Jesus. Faith starts when there is a human limitation. Faith starts when your endeavors come to an end. When your efforts have come to an end, that is where you start seeking God who can give you freely. Dear brothers and sisters, this woman came to rock bottom. This woman came to a place where there was no other option. And when there was no other option, she was just right for God. Hallelujah. Do you have an issue that you have no solution for? You can't give a call and solve the problem. You can't write a check and get it done. You can't tell a friend to sort it out. You have an issue that cannot be solved. Dear brothers, if you are like that today, you are just right for God. When human limitation is there, that is the very place where faith starts to operate. Hallelujah. And when, 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 when God starts to work, he gives you the best you can ever have. For some people, it is very sad that they just can't believe that God will solve your problem today. Many people, sometimes many Christians, live in the area of wishing. 
They say, in the sweet by and by, my prayers will get answered. But God, that is wishful thinking. That is just wishing. I wish my prayer is answered. But that's not faith. If you understand faith, you will say, Lord, today I touch you and today you will answer me. This woman, I see a lot of courage in this woman. This woman didn't say, okay, when I touch Jesus, maybe in about another 12 years time, I will get better. She didn't say that. When she heard about Jesus, she believed something. And she started to say something. Verse Mark 5, verse 27 and 28. Mark 5, verses 27, I'll read from this. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. When she heard some, about Jesus, something happened within her. She said, if I touch Jesus, I will be made well. I wonder sometimes, what did he hear about Jesus? What did she hear about Jesus that she got so interested to touch the hem of his garment? There is no teaching like that where if you touch the hem of his garment that you will be healed. There was no uh, uh, knowledge in the Bible where you say if you touch the hem of the garment you will be healed. But this woman, when she heard about Jesus, she started to believe something. She said, if I would touch the hem of his garment, I will be made well. She started to say something. She believed what she said was true. Dear brothers, dear sisters, do you believe God for your breakthrough today? Are you believing God for your breakthrough today or are you just wishfully thinking my prayers will be answered in one year time or two years time? Do you have faith today? Do you believe that your diabetes will be healed today? Do you believe that your pain in the head that you had for a long time will be healed today? Do you believe that your eyesight that was dimming would be healed today? Because we have come for a miracle breakthrough Sunday. Hallelujah! Never keep your breakthrough for tomorrow when you can have that today. Hallelujah! This woman had faith. And secondly, this woman believed something about Jesus. There was nothing in this woman that could, that could demand God's grace. This woman didn't say, okay, because I honor God, I would be healed. This woman didn't say, okay, I, I believe that, you know, I have lived a holy life and because of that I would be healed. This woman, woman didn't say, I have prayed for a long time and because of that I, was, I, I will get healed. But this woman believed something that is extraordinary. This woman believed that Jesus was totally good. This woman didn't have anything to offer Jesus. But this woman believed, Jesus, you are good to me. Jesus, you are kind. Jesus, you raised the dead, you cleansed the lepers. You will heal me too. Jesus, you touched the man who was leprous and you would touch me too. This woman believed that God was so kind that Jesus would touch and heal her today. Dear brothers, do you believe that today over your problem? Do you have the faith of this woman over your problem? Do you believe that Jesus is so kind that he will settle it today? 
she didn't go around saying, I need to have more faith, I need to have more faith, I need to have more faith. She didn't go to a class saying, teach me how to have faith. She didn't say, go on and say, I need to pray more, I need to consecrate myself more, no. What did she do? She solely believed that Jesus was good. Today, if you solely believe that Jesus is so good, that is the first step in having faith. She knew she couldn't earn this. But do you believe Jesus that he is so good, he will solve all your problems today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She was so taken up with the goodness of God, goodness of Jesus, she came behind and said, if I would touch the hem of his garment, I would be healed. Thirdly, she believed before any evidence of healing. Even when the body was so shattered with this illness, she believed that she would get healed. Are you in the same state today? When there is no evidence for you to believe that you are well, do you still believe that God would do the miracle for you? When this woman had the issue, she felt blood was draining out. But yet she believed, I know Jesus would heal me. When there was no evidence. And this woman got her miracle because believing is receiving. I would like if you can tell me, uh, repeat with me. Believing is receiving. If you believe today, you will receive today. This woman believed that day and she received that day. And touching Jesus means that you come to rest in your Papa God. You come to rest in Jesus knowing that he loves you. This woman didn't grow. This woman thought, today my problems are going to an end because I am meeting with Papa Jesus. He is my Papa. I come to rest about my struggle because I'm going to meet my Papa Jesus. He's my Papa. Hallelujah. Do you remember your father's house? Do you remember your father's house? What are your thoughts about your father's house? When you go to your father's house, you know there is rest. You know there is love. You know that you don't have to strive to earn anything. You know everything is free there for you. And when we come to touch Jesus, we come to our Father's house. Hallelujah. I'm coming to an end of my message. It's a short message. Can I call the worship team to come? And the third aspect, first we discussed about the issue. Second, we discussed about touching Jesus. Thirdly, we are talking about when she touched Jesus, what happened to her? Immediately, 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 there was something happening to her. Immediately, there was something happening to her. Immediately, sometimes we think, when if, if it took 12 years for her to come to this state, it will take 12 more years for her to come out. But the moment you touch Jesus, immediately something happened to her. She felt deep within her that something is happening. I just want you to rise to your feet at this very moment. I just want you to touch Jesus today. Like the sing with the single eye devotion that this woman had about the goodness of Jesus. I want you to touch Jesus today. 
Hallelujah. Today, like the woman who touched the hem of his garment, you are going to touch Jesus, the lover of your soul. Father, we thank you, Lord, because all our problems are coming to an end. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Today, when I touch Jesus, all the debts that I have are coming to an end. Today, when I touch Jesus, all the relationships that are broken are coming straight because of Jesus Christ. Today, when I touch Jesus, the financial issues that have troubled me for these long years is coming to an end because of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, because your grace is going, your grace is moving upon your people today. For all they need, your grace is moving upon their life. Just as this woman came to Jesus and thought so good about you, Today we are looking at Jesus that you love us so much Father we bless your name and the scriptures say she felt within herself that something was happening to her she felt within herself that the plague has been stopped she felt within herself that something was happening to her today in a few more minutes time we are going to have our altar time and you are going to feel the same thing over your life deep within you deep within you deep within you it's not in your mind but deep within you there is a voice saying your problem is solved today deep within you there is a voice saying that your diabetes is all over deep within you there is a voice saying your relationship is okay today father we release your presence over your people right now lord i just want you to touch jesus now i just want you to concentrate wholly on him I just want you, if you can, to raise your hands towards him. Just touch Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Just as this woman touched Jesus, Lord, we bless your holy name, Lord. We bless your holy name, Lord. We bless your holy name. There are some parents here touching Jesus for their pair, for their children. Jesus is listening to their cry now. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. We worship your name, Holy Father. Hallelujah. We Hallelujah. We bless your name. He touched me and made me whole hallelujah while you are just crying out to jesus something is happening over to your life something is happening to your life right now deep within you it's the conviction that you are well now hallelujah something happened and I Shall we cry out to God a little bit more? He touched me. Yes, He is touching you right now. He touched me.
Hallelujah. Deep within you, there is a peace that is welling up in your life. Deep within you, there is a peace over your matter. Your mind may say something, but deep within you is the voice of God coming over your life right now. I just want you to concentrate on the peace that is within you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that your arm is going to and fro, touching people. Father, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Then the hand of Jesus touched me. to come to the altar and God is going to touch you this is your step to touch the hem of Jesus' garment this woman came in the press and went forward to touch the hem of Jesus' garment and this is your step forward to touch Jesus. Dear brother and sister, don't put off your victory for tomorrow. Today is the day of God's salvation for you. Today is the day of complete health for your lives. I would like the altar call team to come forward right now. As hands are being laid, the presence of Jesus will come strongly over your life. He touched me. He touched me. 